Hey, yo. hey guys, it's K420. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. And I'm back with something that I'm. I, I just been really bothering me. I just cannot wrap my head around what is going on in this country, where it's suddenly become not just okay, not just permittable, but fashionable apparently to talk about assassinating our president. Regardless of who that president is, we are the United States. We are one people. That president represents all of us, whether you like him or not, whether it is your the person you voted for or not. I just don't think, I think it's been too long since JFK or something because the bottom line is what I'm about to show you should really fucking, scare, excuse me, should really freaking scare you. It doesn't matter. I've got swear words coming up in this video anyway. So, but by the way, this is definitely not for anybody under 18. So please, if you're under 18, don't watch this or something. <laughs> All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what I'm irritated about first, okay? I was reading my good old Daily Caller, and I come across this, and then I started digging. I'm like, wait a minute, are you kidding me? So this Instagram page is what popped up first, and it's a, um, the hashtag is uh, hanging with Trump. And it's basically a shirt that they're selling, uh, their Indiegogo campaign or whatever it is. And it's, yeah, in, yeah in, get yours at Indiegogo. And it shows several um, models wearing the T-shirts, which you saw in the beginning. I wish it would hurry up and show up, but it's not showing up. Come on. That picture that I showed you in the beginning of the three models wearing the T-shirts with the where basically Donald Trump is hanging from the tie. All right, we'll go to this one. This one's, this one's already up. There we go. Okay, so this is the actual Instagram. I actually checked it yesterday. It's been down since for about 24 hours now. The Facebook page was taken down immediately, but this page was left up for well over a week before it was taken down. Now, if you can see, there's Donald Trump hanging from his signature red tie. The new, it's tied into a noose around his neck. What if that wasn't Donald Trump? What if that was Barack Obama? Do you think that it would be appropriate for these, you know, this white girl to be wearing a t-shirt of Barack Obama hanging from a tie? Do you think that would be appropriate? When did we stop looking at things in the big picture? When did we stop looking at how this could make the other side feel? You know, when did we stop caring? Let's take a look at, in the 18 months Donald Trump has been in office, how many different attempt, or, uh, threats um, have been made against him? We all know this one. It all started with this one. Uh, as we know, Kathy Griffin, and she says this was an art you know, an art thing that she did. Somebody asked her to do. Kathy Griffin spent the next year after this on cable news crying and whining that her her, her career was over. She was fired from CNN's uh, New Year's Eve thing that she used to host every year. And, uh, oh, my goodness. I just, it's, like, it's insane to me that this is even considered art. But there's other Donald Trump art that will blow your mind, too, eventually. Now, this kid was before Donald Trump. Hey, why y'all criticizing me now? Y'all scared because y'all see a nigga got muff. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Sorry, guys. Oh, shit. Fuck the government the wall, take the army the wall, take the What is going on? 
between the wall. I go to war with who the fuck I want to, but I really want to go to war with Donald Trump, because Donald Trump trying to take food stamps from my mom, and that's all the fuck she got, bitch ass nigga. So you niggas better stay the fuck down. Look, long as the motherfucking government let us keep food stamps in Sherwood, we gonna be good. But the first time this nigga passed a law talking about he taking Louisiana purchase, shit gonna get ugly. I swear to God, on every motherfucking chain I got, on my dead pit bulls in the backyard bed, bitches gonna go down. And I'm talking about all the way down, nigga. I'm talking about that mean no more barbecues, that mean no more nothing. You gotta understand, baby, them turn love through loops. They love that shit. So if you take that shit... Okay. Next one. I believe the Secret Service uh, visited that young man about a week later. Uh, why isn't the assassination attempt on Donald Trump bigger news? Um, and that, this kind of bothers me, like because it hasn't been, it hasn't been news. It hasn't been. It's like it's expected. It's okay. It's a, uh, it's a normal part of conversation. Like I mean, and this actually happened at a Trump rally. This young man, um, for whatever reason, has been very, very covered up. Um, had a gun and was from Canada. Michael Stephen Sanford, 20 year old man, um, oh, not Canada, British, British citizen, uh, who was in the U.S. illegal after he overstayed his visa. Sanford tried to pull a gun from the holster of a police officer at a Trump rally in Vegas. He was arrested and told Secret Service he had driven to the event from, from California and had been planning to kill the candidate for a year. Other assassination attempts that failed by a long shot would have received scant coverage too. A previous would be Obama assassin James McVeigh also hatched a plot that involved swiping an officer's gun after stabbing a 75 year old woman to death in South Dakota and stealing her car. McVeigh drove to Wisconsin where he planned to ambush a cop and take his firearm. McVeigh said he planned to continue through Chicago and Indianapolis and eventually kill the president on a golf range in Washington but was apprehended near Madison, Wisconsin. Um, CNN covered McVeigh's arrest and scheme, but some other national news outlets, including Washington Post and New York Times, appeared to have skipped the story altogether. So they're basically saying, oh, it's not a big deal. This this wasn't a big deal because it happened to Obama, and that wasn't a big deal. McVeigh was sentenced to death for killing, his, for killing the South Dakota woman and hanged himself five months later in his prison cell. Come on. Wannabe assassin has attempted to take Donald Trump's life at a rally. British man called Michael Sanford. Neighbours in the Surrey Hills have been describing him. Um, yes, recognise him. Haven't seen him for about 12 months, 18 months. Um, quite a skinny built chap. And he used to just be seen walking up and down the road, sort of mainly at night time early hours of the morning, waking people up. He was with a crowd that I suppose were coming back from the pubs, drinking, that sort of thing, but didn't know him to speak to, I'm afraid. His mother is reportedly devastated. His head teacher refused rent. Meanwhile, far from home, Sanford appeared in court, charged with an act of violence in restricted grounds. Court papers show he has been to a gun range a day before the incident and how to shoot and had been planning to kill Trump for a year. Yeah, that one that one was during the rally. That was before Trump even won. Like that's this is how this has been going on for well over 18 months. But I I just want to bring up like I mean, don't I don't want you to think this hasn't happened to other presidents because like I said, Obama had threats made against him. But I want there's a difference. I'm going to go through all these threats against Trump and then I'm going to show you what happened to two people that threatened Obama, okay? Another Hollywood star just joked about killing Trump and no one's laughing. This is when Johnny Depp said, um, when's the last time an actor assassinated a president? Because, of course, John Wilkes Booth was an actor um, and took Abraham Lincoln's life. Uh, later, J Depp apologized and claimed it, that it was a bad joke in poor taste. However, it, I mean, between Madonna wanting to blow up the White House, et cetera, et cetera, uh, this is not it's not a joke. And, and it, liberals are make, liberals in Hollywood are making it uh, um, an OK, you know, thing for it to be said. And, and people they know that they're that people are going to mimic and imitate, you know, their their own views. It's, just, it's insane. So they can shape a narrative that. That this isn't a, that this is normal, that 
threatening to, to want to assassinate or want Trump to be assassinated is an okay thing. And I say that because it goes right down to even lawmakers. When Missouri lawmaker writes and quickly regrets, I hope Trump is assassinated. Democratic Missouri State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal said, um, as a result, she, the U.S. Secret Service of St. Louis field office is investigating her and Claire McCaskill, chairman of the Missouri Democratic Party, and they have both called on her to resign because the Missouri State Senator from University City posted and quickly deleted a comment on Facebook saying she hoped President Trump would be assassinated. She told the star she posted the comment out of frustration with the trauma and despair that tr the president is causing with his statements about the events in Charlottesville, which is another BS. You know, they, that was a Democratic false flag. Heather Hoyer or Heather Heyer did not die because she got hit by a car. Heather Heyer had a heart attack. I'm not saying that that nut job didn't drive into a crowd of people. I'm saying that the, the, the Democrats used the situation into their best to their the best of their ability to make themselves look good <clears throat> excuse me later in a thread uh, another commenter she wrote i hope trump is assassinated she later deleted the comment or first it says on my personal facebook i put up a statement saying that i really hate trump he's causing trauma and nightmares that was my original post a whole bunch of people responded and later in the thread she wrote i i hope trump is assassinated so uh, let's see, three-year anniversary of the fatal shooting of Michael Brown. She represents Missouri. Nothing else about that, of course. Like she basically, they're giving her an excuse. Like she has a reason. Oh, people are afraid to go down the streets, and it's worse than Ferguson. As long as I have a voice, I'm going to talk about the damage Trump is creating. Yada yada. Promoting, supporting, and suggesting violence against anyone, especially our elected leaders, is never acceptable. Said. Senate Minority Leader Gina Walsh, who she's a Democrat from the same county. So she's basically trying to remove herself from the other two Democrats who, you know, McCaskill and Nadal, who both should be resigning at this point in time. Uh, you don't, it says, I don't, yes, exactly. I don't care. This is what I meant to say, guys. I don't care what the president says or how mad you are. You do not call for his assassination. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, are you kidding me? Like, where did it become okay to, to say, I mean, think about all the presidents that have promised things that never, you know, they got into office and didn't do them. Do you just wish they're, you hope they could die because they didn't do what they said they were going to do? No. I mean, come on now. Right here. I don't care what your president says or how mad you are. You don't call for his assassination if you're, especially if you're an elected official. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's hit the road, keep going. Do, 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 do. Come in, source. FBI plot. Sorry, guys, my stuff's a little slow. Here we go. Okay, so this is Kevin Jackson, guys. Um, I I believe you were, yeah, he's a deputy. Anyway. He's a Fox contributor. Let's see what it, hang on a second. Fox guest host on Tuesday suggested the FBI plotted to assassinate President Donald Trump before he took office. This was right, right before his, uh, the day before his inauguration. While discussing text messages of two bureau agents formerly working for the FBI's probe, right-wing radio hosts and outnumbered guests, Kevin Jackson said he hopes the Senate Judiciary Committee presses Andrew McCabe on whether certain texts point to a specific intent, whether it was an assassination attempt or whatever. A stunned host, Harris Faulkner, replied, whoa, whoa, whoa. But Jackson pressed on. I'm just saying, we don't know what it was, what the texts say. We better make sure this guy doesn't get in at all costs. What's that mean? So I'm saying there's a spectrum of what does that mean? Seeking to distance her show from a conspiracy theory. Faulkner attempted to clarify. I just wanted to make sure that we press in on the fact that no one has floated any sort of idea. Jackson replied, oh, it's been floated. When I talk about this, I'm talking about social media stuff and you know that it's out there. I'm not, I'm not talking about media sources after he, after co-host Sandra Smith butted in to say, so nothing credible, Jackson paused, shrugged his shoulders and said, well, 
I mean, yeah, Fox News is no stranger to giving airtime to unfounded or debunked right-wing conspiracy theories. So I put the source up here because everybody always says that I only use um, right-wing stuff. This is the left-wing page. Obviously, you can tell by the way it's written. It leans completely to the left. But what I want you to see is the point that someone that has, you know, that has an in, inside uh, view of the FBI um and sources on the inside and this is what i heard this months ago when i started researching this that the text messages that they are discovering that they found text messages from andrew mccabe threatening to assassinate the president all right let's do this da, 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 da. What about social media? What about social media, guys? Should it be against the law for you to threaten to assassinate the president on social media? I would imagine so. I, and I imagine like most people who see it, if you think that you're going to write, I I want to see, I want to kill Trump on social media, and that you're not going to get turned in, somebody will report that tweet, and you might as well expect or tweet or Facebook post or Instagram post or whatever you Discord, any comment on a YouTube video, it's going to get found. Okay, and the Secret Service is going to be at your house. This is just because the culture and the, the the time that we're living in seems to try to press the idea of assassinating Trump as being an acceptable thing. It just wow. Okay, so this is a uh, obviously somebody wrote kill Trump. Um, in Oakland, California, following the election of Donald Trump. Uh, that basically, this is social media. Assassination threats tr uh, against Trump flooded Twitter. This is right after he was elected. Th three days. I mean, the minutes after he was elected, hashtag kill Trump and hashtag rape Melania went viral on Twitter. And I'm going to show you that right now. Oh, come on. Well, oh, come on. There you go. Okay. Twitter allows rape Melania to trend after site explodes with Trump and assassination threats. Now, I really kind of was hoping when they were up on the Hill testifying the other day that they would have to talk about these uh, hashtags that they allow to um, go viral when they are censoring so many. They censored hashtag my name is Seth Rich and I am Seth Rich. And Seth Rich was killed or Seth Rich is a, the DNC leaker. Uh, anything to do with Seth Rich is always taken down no matter how high it trends. You could have hundreds of thousands of people talking about it and they don't care. They always cut it off. So why are they allowing rape Melania and kill Trump to go viral is what I would like to know. And as you can tell, somebody over here oops, has a sign to rape Melania. Oops, there we go. And it says, uh, we we did it. Outside the Trump Hotel, processor held up a sign that said, rape Melania. Melania. Well, yeah, Jack, at Jack, why are you allowing this to trend? I just saw rape Melania is trending. More reminders that love Trump's hate is a lie. So many people talked about killing Trump. Assassinate Trump, free speech. Rape Melania, free speech. Run them over. Because they were walking in front, you know, come on. Like, this is serious, you guys. We have to stop. Do you see where we're going? Do you see this? Who are we as a people when this is the answer to our our anger and our problems? You know, this is the local GOP fire office that before the election, before he even was elected, was firebombed. All of the GOP stuff for that area was in here. And. As you can see, it was all burn up. Oops, sorry. It was all burn up. Nazi Republicans leave town or else with, with a swastika with spray painted on an adjacent building, told, according to local officials. 
um, Matt McCrory and Monday called the fire an assault on democracy and said the incident won't get in the way of fair elections. A bottle of flammable liquid was thrown into the Orange County Republican headquarters. A substance appears to have ignited out inside the building, burned some furniture, and then damaged the building's interior before going out. The substance was housed in a bottle thrown through one of the building's front windows, according to a statement by the town of Hillsboro. So there's that. Oh, there's so many more. You guys will not believe this. Like how many times, how many different threats have gone on to, against this president and his family? <sighs> Several threats per day made against Trump, said the Secret Service director. Um, which is, I mean, that there's an average amount of threats that do flow in. I have to say that I don't necessarily agree that six to eight threats a day are, are normal. And I don't think that they say the same number of threats were made against Obama and Bush while they were in office. I just, okay, if that was the case, then it was spun differently in the media. And I'm going to show you why. Because the people who threatened to assassinate Trump are reported on as if they are they are heroes and they have a right to do it. They've, they've been hurt in some way, shape, or form. But those who threatened to assassinate Obama, um, the media spun it to, you know, to that whole mugshot photo and, you know, oh, they're going to prison and so on and so forth. Racist is going to prison. So, yeah, um, I just don't understand why the media is allowing this to, to go on because that's really, truly who's in charge of, this message. Social media, mainstream media, they could all fix this and they choose not to. They choose to continue to divide us. Peter Fonda, he tweets he wants to rip Baron from his mother and put him in a cage with pedophiles. Good job, Pete. Another Hollywood screw up that shows, you know, the first thing he can think of is putting a young child in a cage with pedophiles. Hmm. Doesn't that make you wonder why Peter couldn't think of anything else he wanted to do with Donald Trump's son? Maybe that's because Hollywood's full of nothing but pedophiles. Peter, Fonda. Anywho, um, that was during the child separation thing at the border. This child separation thing that was in that's in the Obama law that was put you know put forth on at the border. Here we'll check this out real quick, you guys. Oh, it came over here. Uh-oh. About to take it off in a second. All right, well, I'm not going to mess with it. Oh, of course, now it does it. Yeah, they wanted him. He wanted them to surround their schools so that it would scare the fuck f out of the children. He said. They didn't take any action against Fonda. Not one. Because he's a blue check. Anyhow, there you go. They took no action against Fonda. He apologized the next day. You know, what do you do? I'm irritated because if, if that was something that I had done or said on my webpage, I would have gotten a strike for it. 
Okay, so I don't know if you heard about this, but this happened recent, uh, right after they won. So uh, you know, this year, like uh, about a year into their thing. So February, yeah, February 2018, Donald Trump Jr.'s wife, Vanessa, was hospitalized after opening a package with suspicious white powder. If you were a 9-11 person and you're, you know, you're alive during the time, then you remember right after 9-11 when uh, some news stations and uh, some government people were sent envelopes with what was believed to be anthrax. Well, I think this was meant to scare um, Don, Vanessa Trump, um, you know, and basically to be Jesus because she's the one that ended up opening the letter. And... Let's see here. It's 10 a.m. Third person was taken to the hospital. Okay, when Vanessa Trump opened the letter, white powder spilled out. She called 911. The former model and husband, also 40, have five children, none of whom were home at the in time of the incident. Trump Jr. blamed the letter on political opposition. Thankful, thankful that Vanessa and my children are safe and unharmed after an incredibly scary situation that has occurred this morning. Donald Trump tweeted hours later. Junior tweeted hours later. Truly disgusting that certain individuals choose to express their opposing views in such a disturbing way. Uh, and then, let's see. I don't. I think they found out that it wasn't anything. It was like talcum powder or something. But the point is, is that can you imagine being that woman opening that letter and, and that powder falls out in front of you? And you just literally are waiting to die now. Like that was probably what she was going through until she, you know what I'm saying? For hours until it was taken care of. Important country, not only for geopolitical reasons, but because they meddled in our lives. All right. This is where, uh, if you've been paying attention, there's been this uh, CIA guy that's been all over mainstream news. And he has threatened Trump m numerous times on mainstream news. His name is Phil Mudd. And he's a real good friend to Jim Comey and Robert Mueller. And there's investigations going on. I can't accept that as an excuse. And I think other people should press him for a better answer. What was your response, Phil Mudd? A couple of surprises. Let me give you one bottom line. As a former government official, government's going to kill this guy. He defends Vladimir Putin. Their State Department and CIA offers are coming home. And at Langley and at Foggy Bottom, CIA and State, they're saying, this is how you defend us? Okay. Phil Mott has said that on more than one occasion. I just want you to know. And if you remember, Trump just went and did this, the summit with uh, Russia, and this wasn't from that. This was from a, like back during the election, Phil Mudd. The, I can't imagine what Phil Mudd would have to say now about the Trump-Putin-Russia the Trump summit because he's so overly insane about that man. All right, sick threat made against Don Jr.'s four-year-old daughter. That's Don Jr.'s daughter. Dressed as a cop for Halloween and the cute pie. Look at her. I want to pinch some cheeks. All right. This has crossed every line of decency. Four-year-old daughter of President Trump, granddaughter of President Trump, is the latest member to be threatened on Twitter. Chloe Trump is the daughter of Donald Jr. Pat Dussault, a Canadian writer, tweeted, Don't worry, we're coming for Chloe, too, on the social media website. This is not the first threat to have surfaced against the kids in the Trump family. They have, be, they have come in the wake of the president's firestorm over children of illegal immigrants being separated from their families at the border. Dussault has since deleted his tweet, but it was captured by screen grabs. Hang on. Oh, and seen by many. The Secret Service has reportedly been informed of the post, according to Yahoo News. The recent threat comes in a wake of another threat made by Peter Fonda. Yep. Okay. Secret Service was notified. Fonda later apologized. James Woods used his Twitter account to bring attention to the risk to Chloe and Trump's four-year-old granddaughter. This is exactly the kind of violence that has been inspired by Peter Fonda's tweets, Wood wrote. He included the screenshot of Dussault's tweet. You saw apologize via Twitter, but his account has been deactivated and is no longer accessible. Some of the public outrage over Fonda's tweet. People continue to push for Sony Pictures to bar Fonda, bar Fonda coming from coming film festival from being released. Okay, I tweeted something highly inappropriate. He said and vulgar about the president and his family. 
In response to the devastating images I was seeing on TV, Peter Fonda wrote an apology. So, I like American, like many Americans, I'm not in Pope Bowl. I get so tired of that, many Americans. There's like 60 million people voted for Trump, guys. It's not like, you know, he, there was not a single vote changed by this Russia stuff. So you know what I mean? Oops. So anyway, I got a couple more I want to show you here, and then we'll wrap this up, and I'm going to go do a video on, uh, I got a couple things. Let's look out tonight because I got uh, a video I want to do on, uh, a new, it's, it's crazy, there's a new Pizzagate thing, and I, I, I hate saying that word, it, Pizzagate, but no, really, there's a new um, thread out on Twitter that is re regarding Tom Hanks that I think everybody needs to hear about, and I think... Um, I'm going to do a video on the heroin overdose of Demi Lovato, since you all know I got 11 years clean. So, Trump tweets draw a tidal wave of threats. Um, basically, I just wanted you to, you know, they're they're basically blaming his tweets for the, you know, the threats on his own tweet. Well, it's your fault. You tweet, so now you're bringing in your own threats. I wanted you to see that. Uh, it's not, uh, not anything else I really stopped there for, because everything else they write after that is just a bold-faced lie. So here, you guys remember during the election um, here in New York, I know they had one of these, but these popped up all over the country. And what if that was Barack Obama or Michelle Obama standing there, in, you know, with this statue? What would, what would people do? Come on. Oops, I'm a little higher. Hang on. I'm going to play the video so you guys can see, and then I'll show you the pictures. Shoot. Is it up top? Is that where it's swinging? There's the Donald Trump, naked Donald Trumps. Okay, guys, they put statues of Donald Trump naked all over the United States. You know, an unflattering body and bright orange, yellowy hair. It doesn't, I mean, come on now. That's ridiculous. Come on. Maybe I gotta do it again. There we go. I think that's what I gotta do. Anyway, it's called In Decline. This is the name of the artist, In Decline. The activist group, In Decline. They're the ones that put all, all these statues. Of, it's crazy because they didn't make statues of all the Republican nominees, just Donald. It was like they had to go after him. They weren't going to be happy until so they did. And they sure did. Quite illegally, from what I understand, but I can't get this video playing, guys. I tried. Basically, all over different cities, these were put up. There was, I think there may have been somewhere between 16 of you know, 13 and 16 of them. Okay, man. Digital music news. Oh, Secret Service detains rapper over Trump assassination plot. Give me a second here. Come on, move it up. Move it on up. Come on. Okay. Rick Ross threatened to kill the president. So did Big Sean. But Latino rapper Renaissance was hunted down by the Secret Service for his highly detailed assassination fantasy called Trump Dies. Although Kanye West, rap, the rap community, all over Kanye West, the rap community has, oops, been vulnerable, been vulnerable, virulently anti-Trump, which is whatever. That is coming out in the music through rapper Renaissance may have gone too far. Just this past week, the Fort Worth, Texas, Texas, I keep dropping it, Texas-based rapper, um, received a threatening interrogation from Secret Service over his release, recent release of Trump Dies. The track offers a detailed plot to capture and kill Donald Trump. Plenty of artists and people solidly anti-Trump in songs like Fuck Donald Trump by YG and Nipsey Hussle are gaining now gaining national nationwide. Oh, I'm such a mess today. 
nationwide airplay. But Trump dies, takes things to an entirely new level. Where is it? I just lost it. Yeah, there we go. And goes far beyond a simple death threat. Instead, Renaissance outlines a fairly, fairly detailed kidnapping plan in even cities. Cites a drug cartel bounty of $100 million on Trump's head. So the cartels put $100 million on his head, too. If, with the Dems going after him illegally, using all the weapons of war we have against them. Then... <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. It's, we got to start doing this tip for tat stuff. That's all I can say about that. But anyway, uh, there's more. We're not done yet. Art gallery in, I believe, Oregon's next. This was just the other day. An art gallery faces backlash uh, uh, threats depicting Trump's beheading for a F Trump exhibit. They had a whole Trump F Trump exhibit, you guys. Like local artists all got to put their F Trump art, you know, and, and this was hanging in the window of the store. An Oregon art gallery was was forced to remove a graphic picture, a uh, viral image of violence against Donald Trump. You don't even, yeah, they erased it. whatever's up here. I'm not sure. I don't know why it's clouded over like that, but maybe because of the, it's gruesome. I don't know. I'm not sure, so don't ask. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, come on, there we go. One, two, three. We only got a couple. Utah man accused of threatening to kill Donald Trump. That was did uh, that was this year too. But back in the wintertime, January. Um, so I believe he planned it on Donald Trump's trip to Utah at that, too. A Utah man faces charges after threatening to kill President Donald Trump in an indictment filed Wednesday. The grand jury returns central Utah returned the indictment show, showing multiple charges against Travis, like Luke Dominguez of threatening the president, the police, and later people in Utah, movie theater, a bank, and other another business. I'm a Navy SEAL, the indictment quoted Dominguez, saying, I woke up and decided going to kill the president, Donald Trump, today. Oh, what happened? Hang on. Sorry, guys. Just reloaded, that's all. He says, I'm going to wake up and go kill Trump today. That's so smart. Please, uh, I woke up and decided to go kill the president, Donald Trump, today. Please forgive me, and then I will die by suicide by cop. The indictment went on to quote, what, discuss what he was saying. I'm going to kill oh, the sexist, racist, homophobic President Trump today. Nothing you can do to save President Trump nor stop me, pigs. CNN has no confirmation of Dominguez's claim that he's a Navy SEAL. Um, a motion filed in court Wednesday, Wednesday said he was confined in Utah State Prison and was due to appear in court on Thursday afternoon. Okay, CNN has no confirmation that Dominguez, oh, I showed you that. Okay, John Hoover, is, that's the guy working for the... Attorney General's office. What did he have to say? I just seen that. <clears throat> right there. John Huber issued a statement outlining the indictment and the type timeline under which. So, yeah, you know, see, you guys, if you don't know anything about John Huber, he is the attorney working on this Russia collusion stuff with the IG, Michael Horowitz. Former Ken Kentucky officer, police officer, you guys, a former Kentucky police officer is charged with threatening Trump. I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? He is such, he's so supportive of, of law enforcement. The, this is just proves that you cannot please everybody no matter how hard you try, I guess. Somebody always wants to kill you. 
I just think that now he's just got, he, are, he always, he had a handful of enemies. Now he's just got his arms loaded down with enemies. So that's a new, uh, former Kentucky cop, guys. We're going to keep going. Uh, oh, no, 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 go back. There we go. This is a guy that has links to Bill and Hillary Clinton and was arrested for threatening to kill Donald Trump. So hang on a second. We'll go down here. All right, there we go. Go off. Okay. Oh, of course, it's going to start again now. There. This is him. And come on. Sorry, guys, I hit it twice. There we go. I know his name's like Dominguez or something like that. Hang on. Dominic. Dominic Papolo has a history of mental health, which must be taken into account, says his legal team. He was homeless. Homeless man who has been, who is believed to have been friends with the Clintons. <laughs> wow. Anyway, friends with the Clintons um, and has been arrested by police in Florida after producing a video in which he threatened to kill President-elect Donald Trump at his inauguration ceremony. Wow. Florida man gets seven years. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay, so this is the difference. Florida man gets seven years for threatening to kill President Obama. Do you see the difference between all those articles I just showed you in this? This right here is an article meant to deter you from making threats. Because it clearly states, you know, there's nothing, you know, it doesn't guesstimate on anything. It's all pure evidence. So anyway, Florida man gets seven years for threatening to kill President Obama. There's, there's a couple of them here. It says, um, you're a dead man. Boy, I hate swine. And I'm the general me and anthrax, so I intend to kill you. So the, I mean, he had some legitimate threats against him. But the people go to prison, you know, and so far I haven't really heard uh, what's going on with all this. All these cases, are you, you know, did, did he go after the senator who was saying the same thing as this guy was? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter where it's coming from. You need to cut it off, whether it's your another a law, another lawmaker or not. So anyway, here we go. This was um sometime last year, the Trump motorcade. They were doing a surgery right before they were getting ready to leave. They, you know, it doesn't matter if it's someone that the Secret Service has had a contract with for years, they will still check the car every single time. So anyway, they well, they were checking the car. They found uh, that one of the press, quote-unquote, had two handguns. Um, I believe he had one on him and, and, and one, I think, oh, maybe not. It just might have been one. Um... Trying to find out here. Hang on a second. Oops. Man gets seven years. Director. Hang on. It's, oh, yeah. This is, I wanted to show you, like, hang on. Go over here real quick. So this is, like, another another thing they did to Obama. So somebody stole his teleprompter. I believe it was in the middle of him talking. <laughs> Yep, Eric Brown of Virginia agreed to ser serve a longer sentence to avoid being prosecuted for all of his time. <laughs> so, yeah, stealing Obama's teleprompter got him seven years. Threatening Obama got the one guy seven years. Threatening Obama got this guy three years. You see that? We need to do that. Okay. Trying to see something here. I need help cleaning my computer off, guys. This is terrible. I'm always trying to get one thing or another closed so I can open another. It's terrible. I know not much about cleaning. I need someone who knows how to update drivers. 
help. You guys always help me with my computer. So if you know, hit me up on the comment and I'll hit, you can help me walk me through how to update these drivers. Because it will not be this slow again next time, I promise. So this is a Secret Service uh, video or Secret Service um, article on here we go on uh, the Trump family it says the U.S. Secret Service is facing a cash crunch because of the high cost of protecting Donald Trump and his many homes and his large family. Its director revealed the Secret Service agents are resigning, promoting, and others might have to go without pay over more than a thousand H agents protecting the Trump family hit salary and overtime gaps um, with more than four months. More than four months to go to the end of the year, Director Tex Ellis told USA Today the Secret Service can no longer pay for hundreds of agents its needs to carry out its protective mission. But listen, after this, you guys, they passed a bill to cover all of the overtime, just so you know. I don't have that up here, but I did want you to see this. And the Secret Service, when they're out here protecting Trump on the streets, then it's just, like, there's always a drone above, a drone watching everywhere. So and that can't that I mean, think about all the things that could happen with that? I don't know. President, large family, I can't change that. I have no flexibility under Trump. 42 people require protection, including 18 family members. Holy cow. And who's all the who's the ones that are protected other than family members? I thought you only did family. Okay. His family compared with 31 during the Obama. Okay, I got you. Under Trump, 42 people require protection, including 18 members of his family compared to the 31 during the Obama administration. So basically, Trump's not using his money to take care of his family. Right? Yeah, I think so. The additional workload and that led to increasing number of agents resigning from the ranks without additional funding. Yeah, they got their funding, you guys. That's all I know. So they went in and they got their funding and they are not working for free anymore. So thank you for watching. Uh, hit me back here soon. I should have um, the video on Demi Lovato up tonight. And I'm hoping to have the... Um, the new Pfizer memo finished read. I got to finish reading it, and I should be ready to go for a video with that. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you.